All right, well, happy first day of autumn. Can't believe it. We're going to work on some actions for backbending today. And the, the theme of the week is kind of finding the power of our legs in our back bends. So we're going to work a lot on alignment of the legs, strength of the legs, and flexibility of the legs. So um, we will just need a strap in addition to the chair and your yoga mat. And we're going to start like we always do, just kind of centering ourselves, preparing for the practice. A lot of times we are getting ourselves where we need to be as scheduled, but we're kind of mind is elsewhere. So this gives us a chance to bring our minds into our bodies and bring ourselves into a more present state of mind. So just find a way to sit comfortably and try to use your own support rather than the chair, besides the seat of the chair, to sit up nice and tall. And see if you can arrange your shoulders so they're above your hips. Your hands can be restful on your lap somewhere. Some of us tend to kind of push forward into the abdomen while others of us round the back. So try not to do either, be right in the middle. You wanna kind of think about your lower back and your abdomen being equally long and even. So just attempting to kind of shift the pelvis. You can shift your weight over the sitting bones, try to find that evenness. And then bringing sort a certain lift and spread to your chest. You're going to close your eyes and just let your eyes point away from your brain toward your cheeks and begin to soften into the belly inside of your mouth, the skin of your face. Notice the parts of you that are either meeting the floor or meeting the chair. Let's see if you can invite these areas to become heavier. And there's parts of you that aren't touching the floor or the chair, but they're still kind of anchor points in your body, such as the shoulders releasing down, your lower jaw releasing down. And once we tap into all of this kind of foundational parts of our body, then we can start to detect sometimes the corresponding light parts of the body. Imagine lifting your own pelvis just slightly higher from the chair, lifting your whole rib cage just slightly higher, your whole skull. And when we really start to master this yoga practice, we can kind of keep track of these polarized qualities at the same time. And let's join our hands together in front of our hearts. On an exhalation, without losing the lift and spread of your chest, bowing toward your heart. And then releasing your hands, lifting your head, and letting your eyes gently come open. And welcome. So we're going to wake up the spine with... Uh, a motion that's kind of circular. So you're going to want to pull away from your chair a little bit. And we're going to be shifting our weight over the sitting bones. So this movement is going to move in one direction to begin with. And you're kind of moving around the perimeter of your sitting bones. And as you start to kind of circle your body in this way, Notice how there's an opportunity to move sideways with your spine. That's the lateral movement. There's an opportunity to round the spine, to arch the spine. So if you're moving through this circular pattern smoothly and evenly, you'll start to kind of detect how you're bringing these uh, four actions to the spine. So we're not twisting yet, but we're getting the lateral movement and the flexion and extension. 
So just kind of exploring space. And what's most important with this is smoothness, not repetitions, not speed. It's really the smoothness. And I like to kind of use the image here. If you've ever had the experience of carving something, you want to kind of work with even pressure when you're carving. Otherwise, you get little divots and uneven kind of texture. So think about using your body like a carving tool and try to move with kind of consistent pressure. I don't know what the word would be kind of in this context, but um, in a smooth way. And since we've been working this one direction, we'll just kind of find a place to stop and gently switch to the second direction. And if you can maintain the smoothness, feel free to explore a deeper range of motion. You might arch a little more fully, you might round your spine a little more fully, you might take those lateral sideways movements with your spine a little bit more deeply. So just kind of feel free to, like I said before, explore space. And we'll do just a couple more here. And when you kind of come to a center area in your little pattern, you can find your way back up to a nice seated position. And we'll finish up with the twisting action. So go ahead and raise your arms, both arms. And on an exhale, you can bring your left hand to your right thigh and your right hand just on your chair seat behind you. And gently start to turn as well as you can to the right. Giving yourself enough time to let the spine kind of wait out the reflexes of resistance and start to bring a little more depth into your twist. Every exhale is a chance to gently coax the spine along into a deeper twist. And we're going to stay here a little bit longer so we can bring the neck in. So first I want you to kind of move your neck so that your chin is more closely aligned with your right shoulder. And when we do this, we've brought the twist into a complete twist from the tailbone up to the brainstem. And now sensing that twist that you've established, we're gonna bring a secondary twist in. So without losing any of this depth that you've accumulated here, you're gonna turn only your head and bring your chin now over your left shoulder. And like I said earlier, can you kind of sense both things happening at once? The first twist and the second twist. And now gently bring your chin back in line with your chest. And on an inhale, you're gonna lengthen out of the twist by reaching up with your arms, coming back to center. And we'll just move directly to the second side. So you can bring right hand to your left thigh and the left hand behind you, nice and close to your body. We're gonna start with the neutral neck as we get the twist going in the new direction here. Every time you exhale, just notice how you can move a little bit more deeply into this twist. And then use your inhale to restore some length to your spine. Like you're being lifted through the top of the head. Now move your head so that your chin comes closer to alignment with the left shoulder. And just imagine or envision in your mind's eye your entire spine from the tailbone up to the brainstem turning in this one direction. Now keep the depth that you've established and only move the head and maintain that first twist. Now we're adding the second twist here. So keep working the first twist deeper and also now bringing more depth to the second twist of the cervical spine and the neck. And after an exhalation, inhale, bring your head back to a neutral position. Raise your arms, come out of the twist. And exhale, release your arms. Good. We're going to find our strap and just leave it over your thighs for a moment. 
And you want to be far enough forward in your chair seat that you can take your hands behind you and support yourself. So I like to kind of tent up on my fingertips just because I, I need the length, but you might be able to put your palms down flat, depends on your own proportions and of course your chair. But your palms are kind of trying to face toward your body. So you want your fingers pointing back and take a moment to roll the insides of the arms forward toward the camera and then the outsides of the arms back. And this is going to, moving the arm flesh is going to help you rotate the shoulders back. It's going to help you bring your chest forward. And I just wanted to bring your attention to something that happens when we start to open the chest, which is a big piece of our back bends, is that we sometimes distort the lower back as a result. So we don't want to do that. So as you keep your chest lifted and spread here, make sure that you haven't pushed your abdomen forward. Make sure you aren't uh, in a forward pelvic tilt. So here's how we correct. We bring the navel in and we imagine we're tilting the pelvis back, meaning you should feel kind of like you're rolling onto the backs of your sitting bones, okay? So just take a few moments holding those wise actions, that's what we call them, and see if you can kind of keep the integrity going. Good. And now you're going to gently release your arms so you can have your hands back. And we're going to work on our cow pose arms, which is a great way to prepare for back bends in the upper body. So we'll start with the strap in our right hand and we'll raise the right arm up. And you're going to rotate your arm so that your palm points back. So you're rotating the arm as fully as you can so your palm points back. You're going to attempt to align your wrist above your shoulder. Yeah, good. And then you're going to bring your hand down to the, the area between your shoulder blades, still holding the strap. So we want that elbow right on top of the shoulder as best we can do. You're going to do two things now to assist this upper arm. So using your free available left arm, give a little pressure to your right elbow. And that will help your right hand move a little bit lower on the spine. And then you're also going to release that pressure, but try to keep your hand there. Take your left hand and grab hold of your right biceps, your whole upper arm. And you're just going to turn the arm. You're moving the outer arm in, the inner arm out. And as you do so, hopefully you get a sense that you're broadening the shoulder. You want the shoulder broad and the elbow narrow. So just do those two things. And of course, when you let go, you'll lose some of it, but the, the action, kind of the idea of the action is still maintained. So you're gonna reach your left arm out now, thumb down and your knuckles forward. Try to keep your upper arm kind of in space where it is right now, as you bend the elbow and reach for part of that strap down a little bit lower. And now walk the hands as close together as you can. Notice how the elbows like to curl forward here. We have to resist that. So you're gonna imagine you're taking your elbows to the wall behind you gently. Also our head likes to push forward here. Don't let that happen. Keep your head right over your spine, which might mean you're pushing on that top arm or wrist or forearm. And then remember how the low back can become distorted when we open the chest. So bring your belly button toward your spine scooping pelvic tilt, which means you're taking the front of the pelvis and tilting it back. You might feel like you're rolling on your back sitting bones as a result. And now just hold for a few more breaths, envisioning the points between the elbows, expanding that space as best you can, continuing to bring both elbows back and not letting the skull move forward. Good. Now gently release your arms and just put the strap over your, your legs again, just leaving it there for a moment and extend your arms. So 45 degrees, palms facing forward, extend out through your fingernails. So we talk about lines of energy in yoga and just letting some stress roll off the shoulders if there's any tension left over there from that upper arm side, especially. Just a couple breaths and sometimes playing with a little rotation. 
can be interesting. So rotating the, the pinkies up, the thumbs down, noticing any sensation that comes with that. Also play with the opposite rotation and just notice. We always wanna kind of take care of ourselves after we do something to make sure that we feel good. So relax your arms now and we'll do the other side. We're gonna hold the strap in the left arm, nice and high. And of course, if you can't have your arm fully up, you can always work with a little bit of a lower elbow if you need to. And rotate the arm as well as you can. So you have your knuckles as best you can facing forward and your palm facing back. And then you're just gonna bend at the elbow and bring your hand to the area between the shoulder blades. We call this the dorsal spine. And then with your available right hand, push down on your elbow and see if you can get the left hand to move any farther down. And again, of course, when you release, you might feel that elbow pop up, but we're working with our best actions that we can. And then you're gonna grab that upper left arm and roll the whole arm, the outer arm in, the inner arm out. And then again, of course, when you release it, you'll feel some of that is lost, but some of it's maintained. And then you'll extend your right arm out sideways with your thumb down. Try to keep your upper arm high, swing the arm and find the strap and work the hands together. Eventually they won't come any closer together. So we call this our edge when we need our own physical kind of stopping point. That's really our starting point. So once you feel the support of your hands where they are, of your elbows moving back, watch that lower back. Make sure you keep the lower back and the front of the abdomen long, that you're not pushing forward into the belly and shortening the lumbar. Also keep your skull right above your spine and just pull without your hands actually moving and pull them apart and take both elbow tips slightly back. Make sure you're breathing. Wonderful. And now relaxing arms down will be the same 45 degree arms. So just extending the fingertips toward the floor, maybe playing with a little rotation on the arms, maybe turning the palms up and then seeing what it feels like to revolve the arms as completely as you can. Just to note here that when our palms are up, the, the shoulders are externally rotated, which is what we like to see for an open chest. And then when the palms are turned back, that internally rotates the shoulders. So we get to know these feelings in our shoulders pretty well when we do yoga. The kind of forward moving shoulder and the backward moving shoulder. Okay. So before we come out of the chair, we're gonna do a little, I call it a seated warrior one. So we're gonna get into the legs now. We're talking about leg flexibility, supporting our back bends. One place we get really limited is our hip flexors because this area of the body, right, where the hip creases are, does a lot more flexion, meaning moving together or closing, than it does extending. So less opening, it does more closing. So to balance that, we have to, we have to open and elongate the hip flexor. So we're gonna start by turning in our chair kind of sideways with the left knee pointing forward and the right foot stepping back. And you don't need to have the back leg straight. We'll do that later when we stand up. But what we're trying to kind of um, access here is getting as best you can your right knee to point down toward the floor. So you might have to kind of adjust yourself on your chair seat to get there. But when you do this, one way the body sneaks out of opening that hip flexor is we end up tilting the torso forward. We don't wanna do that. So you're gonna to try to keep your torso upright. How do we do that? We move the pelvis. So if you think about the pelvis like a bowl, the pelvic tilt action that we want is tipping that bowl back. Kind of like the same action you use to drink out of a cup. So think about tilting the pelvis back to keep your torso up. And you might run your hand over your right hip crease and see about how much uh, of an indentation there is. And when we talk about opening hip flexors, I, I call it ironing out the hip flexor. So for most of us, there's a dent there, there's a, a divot. 
And so what we're trying to do is elongate that area and make it less so, okay? So just swivel around so you can do side two. We'll do a lot more work with this standing, but I just wanted to kind of enter into it, that conversation still seated. So you might just have most of your right buttock and thigh on your chair. You might have to drop off your left buttock and leg to get into the kind of the general shape here. We're not so much worried about the forward leg as long as your foot is down. Don't worry about too much with the alignment. So the left leg now, we're gonna have the knee pointing toward the floor as best you can. And then you might be touching that left hip flexor. And another way to think about the pelvic tilt is if your tailbone right now is pointing back behind you, think about your tailbone like the little eyeball of a periscope, like in a submarine, and you're wanting to see something in front of you. So bring the tailbone into the front body, like it's looking toward whatever you're looking at. And this can help you sit more upright. You guys look very upright, by the way. So good work. And meanwhile, just kind of assessing how deep that indentation is, how tight it is, you might feel a lot of tightness and driving the left knee toward the floor to help elongate the front thigh area. Good work, okay. So gently stepping your foot back underneath you and we're gonna stand up. Oh, amazing, I have a head. Usually I have to adjust my camera. Okay, so we're gonna work with the back of the chair for some support. And we'll step our right foot forward and our left foot back. And so your back heel is gonna be lifted off the floor. Make sure your feet have some width, even though they're not right under you, your feet should be up to hip distance uh, wide apart. So in other words, you're not uh, intersecting heel to toes. You're not on a balance beam. You have some space between your feet. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna be bending the right knee and straightening it and attempting to keep our torso upright. So one thing you wanna think about is there's a book on top of your head and your primary goal is to keep that book there. So undisturbing the torso as you bend and straighten. And this is gonna call upon the left hip flexor. It has nothing, no other way to go but to elongate. So if you can keep your torso upright, not let it pitch forward when you bend the knee, you're gonna have to start opening that hip flexor, which is what we're, what we're really trying to do here, okay? So I like to coordinate my knee bending action with my exhale. You don't have to do that, but for me, it's helpful. Oftentimes in yoga, when we uh, are asking the body to elongate, extend, or stretch, we do that on an exhale. So that's why I like to to exhale when I'm bending here because that's when the hip flexor really elongates. And inhale, we push into the floor and we lift up to a straight leg. Just do a couple more with this side. Okay. And now you're gonna help yourself step the left foot forward and the right foot back. So one thing I didn't mention on the first side is when we bend the knee, we don't want the knee going beyond the ankle. So knowing that you have to determine how much, how far you need to step your right foot back. It might need to go a little bit farther back so that you can keep your knee in line with your ankle, okay? So if you just watch here for a moment, I'm just gonna show you what we're trying to avoid. So right now I'm upright, both legs are straight. But as soon as I bend my knee, if my hip flexor is really tight, sometimes we pitch the torso forward. So we don't want to be bending the knee and tilting the torso forward. So we want to bend the knee and think about the book on your head. Your torso stays upright. Okay. So just go at your own pace. Just try to um, really sense where you are in space. And of course, we have the camera to, to look at to see if we're actually doing what we think we're doing. Sometimes we think we're doing something and then we look and we said, Oh no, we're not. So just checking on yourself. But what I see is that you guys are all doing a really good job staying upright when you're bending the knee. And you might notice right hip flexor and left hip flexor have a different story to tell. Uh, for instance, I'm noticing my right hip flexor has a lot more tension today. Okay, so just two more.
and then go ahead and next time you're straight, you can bring a little extra weight into your back foot and then step it forward. That's a nice way to come out. So you can turn yourself around with the back of the chair behind you and start really close to the chair, fingertips on the chair. And then put yourself in mountain pose. So you might need to move the tailbone in. You might need to adjust the shoulders back. You might, might need to adjust your skull back. And now keep your hands where they are on the chair and look at your feet. First of all, were your feet in the correct position? Sometimes I look at my feet and like I just said, I thought they were one way and I see something else. I have a chronic right foot turnout for some reason, always have. So oftentimes if I look down at my mountain foot, I still see that right foot turning out. So it's interesting to check your work. Um, and then, so now that you've looked at your feet, where the big toes are, I'm gonna have you put your heels. So essentially you're stepping one footprint in front of where you were, but you're still reaching for that chair. Okay, so it's gonna be a little bit harder to get into position now that we've uh, walked a little bit farther from the chair. So move your shoulders back, move your tailbone in, put your skull above your spine, compress the buttocks forward, compress the thighs back from front to back, and feel the external rotation of your shoulders. And now see if you can maintain this really beautiful lifted chest, this beautiful pose as you release the chair. Hopefully your thumbs are kind of towards the centers of your outer thighs. Stand up tall, plant your feet deeply in the floor. Maybe close the eyes if you can support the balance. Keep your legs firm. And just like when you were seated, remember we have to find our kind of our anchor points in our body, the parts that connect with the floor, but then also sensing the lightness that can come from that. So lifting the pelvis from the floor, lifting the rib cage, the skull. And just attempting to sense both things simultaneously, both qualities. A lot of times people call yoga hatha yoga, which means sun and moon. And that's really about these qualities being in balance. All right, so we're gonna release the mountain pose, release your limbs. You can shake your legs out if you need to. And now we're gonna work a little bit more with the back leg. So in other words, we're going back to this very same position but we're not gonna bend and straighten anymore. We're gonna be holding the bent knee position, holding the torso upright. And now the work is to fully extend the back leg. So in other words, right now we have left leg back, right leg forward. So we're gonna bring a lot, most of our attention to the left leg. The first thing we wanna do is extend the leg. So some of us have what's, what I call a quasi straight leg. We think it's pretty straight, but we really want it fully extended. So really extend the back leg so there's no bend in your knee. Yawning open hip flexor, upright torso. Remember the pelvis is tilting back like you're drinking out of a cup. So the front rim of the pelvis, we should have lifting, the back rim lowering. Breathe into that stretch of the hip flexor. Left hip flexor elongating. This is a huge piece of our back bends. Two more good breaths here. And now remember to get out of here, you can bring your torso forward. You can put a little extra weight into the back foot, bend the front knee and bring that left foot forward to meet the right. And now we'll stretch the right foot back. Remember to be hip distance apart with width of your feet. Back heel is off the floor. We want to have our back foot far enough back that we keep the left ankle above, I'm sorry, left knee above the left ankle. And then first thing is we really want to take care of straightening the right leg as much as we can. And then moving the pelvis into that posterior tilt, keeping the book on your head. It helps to keep eyes forward. 
Breathing into the elongation of the right hip flexor. Couple more breaths. You guys look great. I would screenshot you right now if I could. And then again, to come out, tilt forward, put some weight in your hands, bring a little spring to the right foot, right ball mounds, and see if you can just kind of step forward that way. And then once both feet are underneath you, release the arms, put yourself in mountain pose, but try to remember that little exercise we did with the chair behind us. So you have to really get the shoulders back, the chest forward without distorting anything. You want to feel that lift and spread of the chest. And now what is it like to have mountain pose with your hip creases less indented, more openness there? Maybe you're feeling a resulting freedom in the lower back. I know I do all the time when I work with hip flexors. I have chronic lower back stuff since I was a kid and it really does help me to relieve some of my lower back congestion. Good. Okay. And go ahead and shake out your limbs. Now warrior one, we're going to come into and I'm gonna have us work with the chair back behind us. So you can either move your chair or move yourself, but we're gonna have the right foot forward, the left foot back. Yeah, uh, never mind. I don't wanna do it that way. <laughs> Sorry. I thought it would work, but I have this lower part of my chair that's preventing it from working. So we're not gonna do it that way. We're gonna face the chair just like we've been doing. So warrior one, the difference is the back foot is going to be down. So in what we were doing before was called lunging. That's kind of the difference is the back heel is up. So for warrior one, the back foot is down and the toes are slightly turned out. We're going to have the right knee on top of the right ankle. It's very much the same work that you've been doing. So once you have position with the legs, your foot is down. Try to straighten your left leg as best you can. Try to keep your torso vertical, not pitching forward. And then we are gonna add one or both arms. It depends on your stability. If you don't need the chair for support, you can take both arms up. If you do need the chair for support, I'm gonna have you take your left arm up because I want you to think about your left arm as an extension of your left leg so that you have this beautiful sweeping arc that happens from the left leg all the way up through the left fingertips. If you can take both arms up, excellent. Then take both arms up. And really work into your back leg. Be more focused on your back leg today than you would in another class. We're going to just try to keep it straight. We're going to try to think about the hip flexor lengthening, opening, ironing out. And you're going to keep moving your tailbone in and keeping your torso upright. Good, now slowly lower the arm or arms, whatever you had. You can straighten your leg, come off of your back heel, put extra weight into the back foot, toes and ball mounds, and then use that to help you step forward. Good, yeah, it's a little bit of a ballistic action, meaning it just kind of, we have to fire ourselves forward. Put yourself in mountain pose, just so we can kind of see what, how that lands for us as far as energy, breath, sensation. There's so many things you can notice about the signature a pose has. In general, back bends are um, energizing. They are mood lifting and they can upregulate a sluggish nervous system. That being said, we don't wanna to get too upregulated so we'll, we'll make sure to do some twists towards the end of the class to help soothe the nervous system. So we'll try second side, warrior one. First, setting up the legs with our hands using the chair for support. So just like those lunges, you have to step far enough back with the right foot now that you can keep your left shin vertical. We're gonna have a slight toe turnout with those right toes. All of the sole of the foot is down. You're gonna come into your bent left knee, you're fully extended, 
right leg, not quasi straight, try to do your best straight right leg. Take the tailbone into the soft tissue of the body. Take a few breaths, just opening that right hip flexor. If and when you're ready, arm or arms go up. And if it's only one arm, take the right arm up this time. Thinking about how the chest is gonna stay lifted and spread without pushing the abdomen forward or collapsing the low back. So we still need to keep the, the belly button tethered to the spine. We still need to tip the pelvis back. Use your arms to lift the rib cage. Keep straightening the right leg. Two more breaths. And then on an inhale, straightening the left leg, touching the chair with the hands again, bringing some weight forward, coming off the back heel, and then put a little bend in your knee with that right leg and spring forward, help yourself step back to mountain pose. So you might notice your breath here. When we work hard, the breath sometimes gets a little ragged. So you don't have to do anything, just notice and wait. And your breath will equalize. It will come back to a smooth, steady string. Okay, nice work. We're gonna work, do a few crescent pose variations. Crescent pose is a standing back bend. So the first variation we're gonna do is with our hands on our hips. And when we do back bends, we wanna have a little bit more generous spacing between the feet. And this is for a few reasons, is to keep the sacral band really nice and broad and it's to help us uh, not get too congested in the pelvis and the hips, but you still wanna have your heels and toes in the same line. So we don't wanna turn the toes out, that's important. So what we're gonna do is have our hands on our hips, our elbows kind of clamping together, not letting them be open because then the shoulders get short. So we're gonna clamp the elbows, which broadens the shoulders. And then you're gonna use your thumbs against your sacrum, either side of the kind of toward the tailbone region to just give a little directive, you're gonna push there. That's gonna help you do that pelvic tilting action. What we're gonna do is we're gonna do 10 uh, little back bends on the exhales. And what I want you to kind of think about when you're doing those 10 exhales is that you're gonna to try to keep the hips in line with the heels. So not letting the hips move around front and back a whole lot. So try to stabilize your hips and lift your chest. It's also not throwing the head back. So one thing you can do, let's do it right now, is free your dominant hand and make an L shape. This is just a little way to make sure you're not throwing your head back, which is a way we deceive ourselves that we are doing a deep back bend. So put your, with your L shape, put your uh, thumb against your breastbone, put your index finger against your chin. And when you have that, when you go back, if your chin leaves your index finger, you're doing too much with your head. Okay, so what I want you to do is take a deep back bend, but don't lose that spacing. Okay, do a couple just kind of training yourself to not throw your head back. And then another way to think about it is you have a big starchy collar on your neck. So you're not letting your head or neck crease or collapse. Okay, when we get to our perfect deepest back bends, then you can throw the head back. But sometimes we start there and then we don't access the spine down below. So this is just kind of to ensure that we're getting the whole spine mobilized before we do the cherry on top. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna be doing it on exhale, 10 of them. You're gonna think about where your hips are in space and think about also that neck position, okay? So when you're ready to go, start with your elbows clamping in a little bit. Exhale, inhale back up. Exhale. Okay. So your hips will move a little, but try to just think about where they are in space and not throw them around, which is a way that we kind of escape the back bending depth. So stabilizing the hips above the heels. 
about five more. Remember the pelvis tilts back when you go into your back bend. So try to think about that. One more here. And the next time you're up, release your arms. You can step your feet a little closer together for mountain pose. Think about your pelvis now as a neutral position. So if it were full of liquid, it's flush to the top. It's not gonna be spilling out the front rim, spilling out the back rim, neutral pelvic tilt. Good. So the next experience I am going to have you guys, you might go off camera, this will be quick, so don't worry, you're, you're going to find a wall and it just needs to be a wall you can touch if there's even if there's like a lot of stuff on your wall. What you really need is just a little area of open space above your head. Okay, so we're going to be just slightly from the wall. And it's it's behind us. And you're going to start with your arms up. And your index fingers touching the wall. And this is very much like what we did with the chair, but in that version, our, our hands were low. So with your hands here touching the wall, I want you to notice your lower back. And if it's really overly arched, bring the navel in, bring the tailbone forward toward the front body. If you can't touch the wall with your hands, you have to maybe move closer. You might also have to open the arms or bend the elbows. Okay, so our work is to have the arms up and slightly back and then find the alignment again. Okay, so once you've kind of found a good mountain pose alignment, you're going to release your arms and step a little bit farther away from the wall. And you're going to do it again. So take the arms up, index fingers find the wall. And then the work gets harder to align yourself here. The pelvic tilt has to be stronger. We have to really engage the shoulders. We have to keep track of the navel staying toward the spine, not pushing into the abdomen. And it might be that you took that step forward and you're not able to recover good alignment. You might have to step a little bit back. So let's do it one more time, try to find your perfect kind of distance from the wall that you can really refine. You can clean it up, but you still feel like you're in a nice open position. Okay, take the arms up, move the tailbone in. Make sure your skull is above your spine, your lumbar is long, your abdomen is not poofing forward, your legs are straight. Wonderful. And release your arms. And step forward. You can come back to your mat if you had to go off the camera a little bit. And take a couple moments just standing in mountain pose. Okay, we're going to do one more little experiment with our strap working with the very same crescent pose. By the way, more new age styles of yoga have a completely different pose they call crescent pose. But in Iyengar tradition, the pose we're doing is crescent pose. So sometimes there's name confusion in the different yoga traditions. So if you happen to know that pose as a different pose, that's why. When I teach kids, they learn a lot of funny, yoga poses in gym class with really weird names. So they'll correct me. That's candlestick pose. <laughs> um, so there are a lot of names sometimes for the, the very same poses. So we're gonna put the strap around our lower back and try to, try to have the strap so that you have even length remaining. We don't wanna have one short end and one long end. And then here's kind of a funny, maneuver is you're going to be taking these each tails back under your kind of around your inner thighs and handing them back to yourself. So it's a little bit of a maneuver to, to do that. What we're not doing is we're not crossing them. So don't cross the right one to the left side, left one to the right side. 
have them on the same side and also do not have twists in your straps because the, those can be pinchy. So here we are in this very weird looking harness. So what this teaching is about is leg movement. When we do backbends, your legs want to splay, meaning your inner thighs want to roll towards the outer thighs. So what we're going to be doing with the strap is training the inner thighs to actually roll back rather than forward. So you're grabbing your strap so that your hands are kind of really close to your buttocks, like right underneath or on top of your buttocks. Your feet are back in their wide, generous position. And then on an exhale, just kind of arch back. You don't have to go into your deepest and pull your hands apart. So you're rolling the inner thighs back, but then keep your pelvic tilt working the way that you want it to. So that posterior tilt and you're just training yourself. So come back up. We're going to do 10 little ones of these. They don't have to be extreme exaggerated back bends. This is about training the movement of the flesh of the thighs. So as you exhale back, you're pulling your hands apart. You're trying to roll your inner thighs back. Inhale to come up. Keep doing it. When we work with kind of corrective actions like this, make sure you don't overcorrect. We don't want to rotate the inner thighs too much. We just want to prevent that splaying out kind of feeling. So in essence, you're kind of keeping your thighs feeling neutral as you do this. And I like this because again, it gives my lower back a, a feeling of lateral space, of horizontal space. Maybe you feel that, maybe you don't. Just a couple more. But last one. And now after doing all these weird kind of experiential things, we're gonna just try it hands-free and see if we can kind of have all of that, those wise actions kind of coming in. So classically the pose is with the arms raised, the hands pressing together. But for some of us, that's not wise because we have maybe shoulder limitations. So you might go into a letter V shape for it to be a little more generous. You might do a goal pose shape, or you might need to keep your hands on your hips. So you only you know what that um, modification needs to be or if it needs to be. If you're going to do the arms up, we're working with our hands together and our arms are not bent elbows. Our arms are straight, which means they're probably touching your head. Otherwise, go into one of those modified positions. Okay, move the tailbone in. Your feet are hip distance apart. And on an exhale, arch back. So remember, roll the inner thighs back. Don't throw your head back. Make sure your pelvic tilt is posterior. Inhale, come up. We're just going to do, let's do eight of these, just little ones. Do it again when you're ready on the exhale. Inhale to come up. Exhale. Remember not to throw the hips around a lot. Three more. And one more. And when you come up, release your arms. Good work. Okay. Let's find our chairs again. And we're going to do a twist. Like I said, we, we want to leave with some energy and possibly the mood being elevated, but we don't want to overdo that. So twists are the antidote to an upregulated nervous system. They help to soothe the nervous system. So we're going to do the version of our twist where we're sitting with the back of the chair to one side, and you can decide which side that is. And then once you're seated sideways on your chair, just take both hands to the back of the chair. And with one hand, you're gently pressing. And with one hand, you're gently, uh, sorry, with one hand, you're gently pressing away from your body. And with one, you're gently pressing toward your body to help you bring your chest toward the back of the chair. What I want you to do is lift your elbows a little bit wider, a little bit higher and wider, which does a couple things. It helps you lift and spread the chest. It also kind of keeps your armpits aerated. If your elbows are pinching your sides, 
your armpits aren't aerated. And in yoga, the armpits are considered a really vital location of energy in the body. And if we kind of clamp them shut, we kind of stifle that energy. So just gently turning toward the chair. Try to keep your eyes really soft. You might even close your eyes. Remember why we're doing this is to kind of help wind down from this energizing practice. And go ahead and inhale and come out of it. And now we're going to gently do a 180 degree turn on the chair. And again, using your hands to press toward and away from your body to encourage the rotation of the thoracic spine, the rib cage, and keeping those elbows a little bit higher than they want to be. We're not going to twist the neck. So just soften your gaze, have your chin right above your chest. And when you come to the end of the next exhale, gently inhale and find your way back to facing forward. We're going to do a child's pose with the arms either between the thighs and the chest or arms hanging and the chest and thighs directly meeting. So determine which one feels better. And then wherever you are, try to let your head release down. So don't use the, the neck muscles to hold the head up. Just let the head descend toward the floor Try to tap into the weight of the head. And sometimes that's a little hard. You, you can, I call it waving or wagging the chin around, making a little sideways figure eight with my chin. Sometimes helps my neck soften. So if you're having trouble releasing the weight of the head, you might play with some gentle movement, just to kind of loosen up the neck. And then hopefully you can let the weight of the head just truly surrender. You might start with your arms on your thighs and then you might move to a deeper position as the back is ready for that. Another way we can downregulate the nervous system is to lean into our exhales. In other words, thinking about the exhale fully emptying from the body. Just about a half a minute more here. And then we're going to begin to come up slowly now. Open yourself up. If there's any other movements that your body would like to do before we just sit quietly, feel free to move in any which way. And we're going to be just sitting quietly using the back of the chair now. We always want to take this time after we work with the poses to be in this quiet, final resting pose, which is considered integrative of the work that we do with the body as kind of the medium, start starting to let it integrate and permeate the mind. So these tensions we kind of deal with physically, 
the body is now suggesting that the mind start to release tension. So we want to make sure that we're as surrendered as we can be, we're as passive as we can be. There's no physical effort required here. So minimize any effort as much as you can. Keep your eyes pointing away from the brain. Most of us have some kind of default tension holding. So run a body scan just with your mind, just kind of checking things out from your head all the way to your feet. And signaling the body that it's time to let go. And then just noticing sensation, noticing breath. And since it's the first day of fall, I wanted to read this beautiful Mary Oliver poem, Song for Autumn. In the deep fall, don't you imagine the leaves think how comfortable it will be to touch the earth instead of the nothingness of air and the endless freshets of wind. And don't you think the trees themselves, especially those with mossy warm caves, begin to think of the birds that will come, six, a dozen, to sleep inside their bodies. And don't you hear the goldenrod whispering goodbye, the everlasting being crowned with the first tuffets of snow, the pond vanishes, and the white field over which the fox runs so quickly brings out its blue shadows and the wind pumps its bellows. And at evening, especially, the piled firewood shifts a little, longing to be on its way. Just taking the next minute to give your awareness more completely to your being, to your breath, to the eternal wave of presence. And start to draw some deeper breaths, but without agitating the brain or the body. Deeper inhalations and more complete exhalations. And then resuming your easiest breath flow. Maybe starting to wiggle your fingers and toes. Rotate your wrists and ankles. And then come away from the back of the chair a little bit. Sit up nice and tall and join your hands together in front of your heart. Roll your shoulders back. And just see what happens when you raise the corners of the mouth, how it changes the whole inner feeling in your body. Let's take a deep breath in through the nose and let it go. From the place within me that I know to be divine, I honor that place within each of you. Namaste. Right. 
Thank you so much for being here. I will be here next week. And then the following week, I will be away in Greece. So I hope you can make it next week. Um, and I'll send out the recording shortly. So thanks, everyone. Bye.